Hi everyone, welcome back to the Mad Evolution Studio. Fawn, we have an incredible and very special episode for everyone today, don't we? We do, and it's all because of our special guest who graciously took the time for us to interview. Lieutenant General John Davis, retired three-star Marine Corps General, and our chairman of MAD's Strategic Advisory Board. Whew, what a title. <laughs> Welcome, General. Welcome, General. Thanks for taking the time. Roger, sir. Oh, you bet. My, we know that you're honor. very busy, so we really appreciate you coming sure. on the show today. It's an awesome. honor to have you in here. Yeah. Well, we would love to start. Donnie and I know about your extensive background, mm -hmm. but a lot of our viewers don't. We would love for you to share it with them. Maybe let everybody know how long you've served your country and what really was it that inspired you to get involved in the military? Okay. Um, well, I would uh, raised in uh, New York State um, and uh, went off to go to college, um, a little school in Pennsylvania, Allegheny College, and studying economics. And uh, I was a 18 year old freshman, and I thought I could be could use a little discipline and uh, a little more <laughs> little, be a little bit more focused on my studies. And uh, I learned about the Marine Corps pro officer program they had that uh, didn't interfere with college and uh, allowed you to go to two boot camps in the summer. And I went and did that, and it allowed me to get in good shape for sports. And it did, uh, those boot camp experiences uh, did uh, make me a better student and a, and a better person. I believe it. Um, got commissioned in 1980, uh, went to infantry training for six months into flight school. Um, I selected uh, jets, came out of the props and went into the jet training pipeline. And in 1982, I got my wings and selected to, to fly the AV Day Harrier, which was wow. a English made vertical takeoff landing airplane. And I was going to stay for three and a half years and go back and get my MBA. And I stayed a lot longer than that. I stayed 37 years. Wow. Yeah, I'd say that's <laughs> yeah. a little longer. Yeah. A little <laughs> I enjoyed the mission and frankly enjoyed the people. And uh, honestly, I joined uh, the Marine Corps to serve my country yeah. and to uh, basically make our, our nation safe. I believed in what we do in this country and believe in our, um, we are the shiny city on the hill. And I'm uh, very proud of all that. And I want to make sure that we protected that against all enemies. Uh, that might uh, try to take that away from us. So I, I did, I served for 37 years. I flew mainly on uh, the Harrier jet, but ended up flying um, F-5s, F-18s. Um, I went to helicopter school when I was a colonel. Um, I commanded a Harrier uh, squadron. I, um, I, I did exchange for the British in Germany during the Cold War. Wow. Um, I, uh, I, I, I commanded a, uh, an aircraft wing, and I was the I was the, I was also the commander of our top gun school in Marine Corps, um, the Marine Aviation Weapons and Tactics Squadron One in Yuma, Arizona. So, the high, the high point was that was a lot of fun. I also you know, uniquely did uh, two tours in uh, at Fort Meade, Maryland, um, uh, working offensive cyberspace operations and collectively the defensive cyberspace operation, or offense and defense. Uh, at Fort Meade uh, as the Deputy Commander of the United States Cyber Command. So I set a lot of that stuff up. Um, so, and then I ended up running Marine Corps Aviation at the end, which was uh, a lot of people don't know Marine Corps Aviation has about a thousand airplanes. And wow. About, uh, a little over 50,000 no uh, Marines and sailors that support that. And uh, I had a lot of fun. I, my wife and I retired in 2017 or at least transition, because I'm still working and doing things, which yeah. I wanted to do out here to Sandpoint, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we love it. We live on the lake. To the good and, graces uh, of Matt, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. I wanted a ski area. My wife wanted big water. And so we, we found the it out here to attract sure. uh, grandchildren. Two, two sons, both of them marine aviators. One flies uh, the F-35. And the other one is uh, a nice. pilot training people on the T-45 right now. So we're blessed to live out here. Absolutely. Yeah. Blast. Wow. You know, me, yes. along with a lot of other guys watching out there, our eyebrows raised when you said Top Gun. I know that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, the Marine, it's the Marine Corps version of that school. The Air Force has one, the Navy has one, the Marine Corps has one. Ours is called uh, uh, MOTS 1 yeah. in Yuma. It's, it's a great place. Now, oh, you cool. mentioned um, in your career being mm -hmm. the deputy commander of the uh, cyber, com cyber command. U.S. Mm -hmm. Cyber Command right. and also uh, the uh, at Fort Meade as well, you said, was, correct? Maybe you could give us a little bit of uh, what that experience was like for you. Um, it, it, for me, it was, uh, um, I was I didn't have a, a, a background in computer science. I had anything but, but I was a strategic planner. And uh, they wanted someone to organize uh, um, those kind of capabilities for a nation if we chose to use them. Uh, to defend ourselves in cyberspace, right? Sure. So it's yeah. like the physical space, the cyber, uh, do that. And so that was the job. That was a lot of creative problem solving, creative learning. But uh, I started that. I was first there from 2006 to 2008, and then again from 2012 to 2014. So I learned wow. a lot there. Yeah. And I'm using that now in my business world. I get sure. to get into a lot of things from the 
information security, mm -hmm. um, uh, cybersecurity yeah, standpoint. I'm sure you pull from a lot of your background into what you do currently. Uh, I do, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Which no stranger in high profile or high security. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of, so, okay, you said you retired from active mm -hmm. duty in I 2017. Did. Did. Correct. So since then, uh, I mean, we know that you're a very skilled pilot mm -hmm. and you've also been involved on some high profile boards with various yeah. companies. Yeah. Do you mind sharing some of the companies? No, no so I still fly, fly general aviation, um, fly a Mooney right now, which is a lot of fun, um, but I enjoy. It keeps me young. It keeps me thinking. Yeah. Um, I, I do. I do like all the sports stuff out here, the fishing and the, <laughs> uh, the outdoor stuff, but uh, and skiing. But I do like uh, keeping involved and flying. Um, yeah. So I'm on the uh, I'm the chairman of the uh, Rolls Royce North America board. And that's mainly, Wonderful. people think that's cars, it's mainly uh, jet engines, helicopter, right, uh, right. Uh, um, jet engines, uh, turbines, and propellers for, for naval yeah. systems. And well, carriers. I can see why you're involved with that. Yeah. 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 Uh, you might know a little called, bit about all um, of that. Cameron Group is a uh, company that uh, builds energetics, so mm -hmm. expendable flares and uh, um, and things like that, some components for other kind of systems, and also things that maybe protective systems for our law enforcement and our soldiers and sailors and Marines that uh, deploy sure. overseas. Um, I, I'm the chairman of the uh, a board called a company called Addison, uh, which is advanced data centers, and it's uh, basically um, locating data centers uh, inside the fence on, on dual use military civilian uh, areas, which is high, uh, kind of a, a data center uh, inside a fence inside a mm -hmm. fence with a pre-grid uh, green um, low carbon emission energy uh, and also very efficient uh, servers, uh, immersed servers uh, in liquid that allows them to use a lot less water and uh, about 40% uh, uh, of the energy savings as well. So, uh, wow, fantastic. You, so you, um, yeah, so it's uh, that's been a lot of fun. We yes. were at board meeting this weekend putting that together. So that's, data centers are actually a lot of times very, they're big users of energy that we need more and more, whether it's mining cryptocurrency right. or basically storing data. But really, you know, you talk about putting data in the cloud, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you go, okay, right. where, where's, where's your data in the cloud being stored? Because there's a, <laughs> there's a set location on the planet or in space that it's being stored. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, where is it? And uh, um, bottom line is those data centers are not particularly designed for the security in, in, in mind. And mm -hmm. we are designing them with physical security and also energy security. I uh, love green, hearing that. That's fantastic. Green energy. Green energy um, can be very secure yeah. um, if it's done the right way. Well, it sounds like you're just as busy after retirement as you were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Who's uh, retired help? again? I'm not. Yeah. Saying, yeah. This is not the schedule yeah. of a retired, retired man. Yeah. 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 Well, how you do you stop working? You start dying. That's right. Is it just you know knowing people or? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think. Well, people they knew me, but they uh, they knew kind of uh, work ethic and uh, mm -hmm. um, that I I didn't want to when I retired I moved out west even though people told me not to do that. Um, I, I wanted Lewis and Clark discovered a great big country right beyond the, the Appalachian Mountains. So I wanted to go out here and I had a one of my bosses said, you know, whatever you do, they called me uh, dog when it was my call sign in the Marine Corps. Whatever you do, don't go out and live in some hillside of Montana. I promised him, I said, I'm not going to do that. I'd go right through <laughs> Montana into, uh, into Idaho. We, had, we bought property out here in uh, 2006 and we've been coming out here uh, every year for vacations from 2006. We know I don't live out here. Yeah. But uh, People That's knew great. that I would, and I didn't want to work uh, big defense contractors. Mm -hmm. I wanted to work small companies where I could have a, maybe a large role. I didn't want to be a potted plant. Sure. Uh, and I wanted to be able to do, and maybe, you know, do what my professors wanted me to do when I graduated from college, a little bit of business. But business that I could feel good about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Well, and one of our personal favorites is that you're the chairman yeah. of our strategic advisory absolutely. board, yes. which I love and it's fantastic. But that's not the only way that you're involved with MAD. You're yeah. also personally an investor and in Make a Difference Ventures, which yes. we are also honored to have you on our team. But what yeah. was it that inspired you to join the MAD team? Um, the idea, honestly, the idea. And so there's a lot of people talk about green energy and a lot of times, honestly, it's, uh, it's a lot of it's fairy dust and it's mm -hmm. not put together really well. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dyed in the wool capitalist. All right. I believe that's one of the principal powers of our country is our, our ability to generate, um, um, resources and capital for investing and, and, and making everybody's lives a little bit better. And I felt that, uh, the green energy side to me, 
Um, it was one the right thing to do, but it's it's only the right thing to do if you're doing it the right way. Right. And frankly, uh, when Mad talked to me about energy solutions, and I was it, I came to them with some requirements for some energy solutions, and they didn't give me a partial solution. You always have to focus on meeting the demand of whatever the customer's sure. requirement is. If you, you know, if you don't do that, then people end up, um, you know, without enough energy to go live their lives. I mean, right. In California right now, they're telling people to unplug their Teslas. That's good luck with that. That's right? crazy. That's, yeah. a, that's not a that's not a good that's not good engineering in my mind. Um, so we want to do better engineering than that. And frankly, it could be it could be a combination of green and low carbon um, that gets it done. And every energy solution um, that people come up that a good company would come up with would be tailored for that particular geographical region. Mm -hmm. Some of the requirements in that geographical region, and like in Albuquerque, they don't have a lot of water, so we we came in with. Uh, very low water use, uh, two percent of the normal data center things for that kind of thing. But Mad comes in with um, a tailored, customized, multi-source energy solution for every project to meet the customer's demand. I thought that was um, realistic and good, and it, it certainly is going to drive more companies and more corporations to use and localities to use green energy. But you can't have it if you can't count on it, right? right. Sure. Yep. It's an engineered end-to-end -end solution with guaranteed energy is what we need. So Absolutely. That's well what said. has been delivered for me. Yeah, it's such a yeah. strong message. And, you know, John, I think a lot of our audience or some of them might actually be tuning in for the very first time right now. Okay. And if they are, what would you say to those people about the possibility of investing in MAD? And it could be reiterating some of what you just said, but is yeah. there more to the message maybe for people right. that might be considering MAD right now as a strategy for investment? Yeah, I would, I would say that MAD offers... a a, it's a portfolio of companies and, and, and ideas, uh, incubators uh, for, for technology that can be brought to the, where you can come in you, and basically ask hard questions, which I do, um, do, <laughs> do, deep, do deep dives on the technology that's out there. In the military world, the government world, we call it a, a TRL level, right? How far along is the technology to be ready to go to market? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, how, how good is it? So um, I did a lot of that in my, my last life as a military person. So we're doing some of that here. And I, I can pick and choose what investments I want to make inside MAD, the ones I think would be the highest payoff. Um, and potential to help or do the kind of work that I, that I would like to do or uh, things sure. that I would like to advance. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, to me, is... Um, it's kind of what separates us and from others. It's not a yeah. big company. It's a small. Um, it's a. It's focusing at the micro level. I'm. I'm bringing uh, individual investors into the um, uh, market at the, you know, uh, which would maybe would look like a SPAC someplace else, <laughs> but it's a. Uh, it's a SPAC by another name. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I feel like we could talk with the general all day, and I guarantee our audience would enjoy hearing mm -hmm. from you. But we know your time is very valuable, yeah. so maybe before we wrap things yeah. up, we could just possibly get you to tell a story or two because we know you're no stranger to adventure in your, you know, in your service life oh, yeah. and in your personal life. We heard you recently may have had a bit of a, you know, unique experience on an aircraft of yours. So maybe you wouldn't mind sharing one or maybe two juicy adventure mm. stories that you've kind of encountered in your lifetime. Um, okay. Let's see here. I would say, well, you want to I had a experimental airplane I flew for a number of years, about eight, seven, eight years, and I loved that airplane. And I had it because it was a, it was a Rutan, Burt Rutan desi inspired design. It had a canard in the front, a propeller in the back, and uh, uh, had just been through its conditional check, so it had been checked out for maintenance. But on short final to go into Bozeman, Montana, um, the motor started to quit. Oh, no. And so I had it's a choice. My landing see. gear was down, I was between two airliners, and uh, I chose to uh, put the landing gear up. So I didn't think I'd make the runway, and I, I saw a piece of grass off the side of the runway and landed the gear up on the lawn. And wow. <laughs> the airplane's not too badly damaged. I'm fine, and it's being rebuilt right now. But, but, I, always, but I always, whenever I was flying, is that even flying? <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, I'm sweating over here. Landed flying, on a blade uh, of grass, yeah. everybody. Did you hear that? I One never, blade of grass. No, there was more than that. There was a small piece of lawn out there. But <laughs> yeah. the, uh, whenever I flew oh. the military, and frankly, everything I do now, um, I always look for a... a uh, What's my what's my plan B? What's going to happen if that doesn't work out? And so yeah. I, I always looked around and thought if I lost a system here, an engineer, what would I do? And I never had to do that in the military mm. not once, and you know, wow. five thousand hours flying in the military, but huh. just yeah. one time, and it came up very unexpectedly. And sure, well, you know, the stakes are very yeah. high, yeah. so it's always good to have a plan wow. B. In the other air, right? <laughs> you know, other adventures, I think that. Um, we well, said you had many. grandkids for the I last do. two months of your life in town. We did, yeah. We have. Um, <laughs> That's an adventure. Yeah, right? Right. we have. So. We have four granddaughters, and uh, they were all out for the uh, ranging from age nine to uh, nine months. 
And uh, the two older ones were out for eight weeks. Wow. Uh, two and a half year old was out for four weeks of that uh, eight, that eight. And then the nine month old was out for um, about a week and a half at that time. Plus we had the grand dog was out <laughs> as well. I love so, that. Yeah. so good. Do you yeah. take them all out fishing? Or? We did. We, yeah, we got them water skiing this year. They, they awesome. love to fish. They love to hike. So they've, uh, you know, we, we bought out here because we wanted to attract grandchildren. And that's working right now. The, the girls learn to ski at Schweitzer, which is a, a wonderful ski. Fantastic. Area. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, a great, that. yeah, it's really, um, it's, we've made for great, great memories for them yeah. this summer. And we had great for memories sure. as well. Yeah. On top that. of all your other duties, yeah. he's got yeah. time I for that still. Right? Yeah. Always have time for grandbabies. <laughs> that's right. I yeah. love it. Well, it's an honor having you yeah. here, John. Thank nice. you for you spending some yeah, time for this Thanks. interview. Thank you so much for being here, John. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. So everyone, you. thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Make sure that you uh, drop a comment, smash that like button, ring that subscribe bell, and share with your friends and family. Also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle is at MadTheFuture. Yes. And also our newly updated website, MadFuture.energy. Check it out. Learn some more about Make a Difference Ventures. Thank you for joining us for today's interview and uh, we'll see you on our next Mad Evolution show. See you next time. Thanks everyone.